You differentiate, I thought, interestingly. I mean, obviously, we know risk isn't standard deviation. We're beyond that. But you differentiate between risk and danger, which kind of seem like the same thing to me. Can you? <laughs> well, that, that's a idea I've been fighting all my life. Um, most people use the word risk to mean danger. So, so in English usage, I concede your point. Um, but to me, risk should be used for a two-sided uh, opportunity, something, something that can be good or can be bad. Danger is for things that can only be bad. Opportunity is for things that can only be good. Um, basically, danger should be minimized and opportunity should be maximized. Uh, that's easy, at least conceptually. Doing it can be difficult. Risk, you want to take the optimum level. Risk should be optimized. And back in the late 80s, when we were struggling with these ideas, and I'm talking about me and some other quantitative traders in New York, um, we wanted to call our field something. Um, and we deliberately chose the word management, risk management. Other people, were, the only other people who were using it were using it in our sense of the word. They were consulting insurance people who told companies, here are the risks you should self-insure because they're statistical, predictable. Um, you, you can't get ruined by them. Here are the things you should buy third-party insurance for because they're so big or they're so unpredictable that you want somebody else uh, um, to take them. And that was called risk management. Um, but the term very quickly got interpreted at large as risk minimization or danger minimization. So people are shocked to find out that risk managers typically spend their time trying to get people to take more risk. Most of the time, uh, people, there are all kinds of institutional factors, psychological biases that make people not take enough risk. Worry, you know, 10 times as much about dangers as they do focusing on possible opportunities. So as a risk manager, someone telling people to take the optimum amount of risk, uh, we didn't want to be confused with minimizers. Frankly, we actually got even shoved into something worse as just risk measurement. So a lot of risk management, 90% of people in risk management are just compiling reports, doing sort of back office calculations, which is fine and, and can be useful in some cases, although I think there's too much of it, but uh, it's not what I call risk management. You do realize, though, that your view of what a risk manager is and what you did it's pretty different from, I'm going to say, 90% of the risk management community. It seems like you were almost a head trader. Um, I did much of what a traditional head trader would do, right? In, in terms of coaching people, in terms of convincing people. Most of what I try to do is convince people that they would be better off managing their risk properly and demonstrating that to people, including by betting. We did a lot of betting in the old days. Um, when I started out in the late 1980s, when we were inventing this stuff, that's what everybody thought. Probably by 10 years later, the world had moved pretty conclusively to your view. I specifically you know, think of in 1997, the Securities and Exchange Commission endorsed value at risk, but in a way that you know, violated its, its, its whole precept of the entire idea of doing it. And kind of since then, yes, risk management departments have grown up to be danger minimizers. It's pretty easy to minimize danger, right? You just don't have a position on that's reasonably <laughs> reasonably minimal. Right. And what that means is the risk manager is in inherent conflict. So the trader wants to take as much risk as possible because his worst case is getting fired. The risk manager wants to take no risk and they lock horns and you know you get some sort of suboptimal allocation. No, the risk manager should be a coach. The risk manager should be going to the trader and saying, I'll show you how to make even more money. Um, and keep it, and keep your job. Um, um, and uh, that, that, I believe, still is the case with head risk managers at risk-taking institutions. So, you know, you go ahead and talk to the head risk manager at a Goldman Sachs, at a big hedge fund, things like that, you will find that attitude. But nearly all of their staff is engaged in something quite different. So when you're dealing with traders, I mean, obviously, you're very quantitative in the way you think about the world, right? And I think it is a different viewpoint to those who are not. But you do recognize, and I'm probably guilty of not recognizing enough, that you can be a logical thinker and not quantitative. How did you deal with those sort of, I don't know what the word is, intuitively based traders? Was that a different challenge to dealing with someone who was quantitative and you could just speak the same language to them? Actually, an intuitive trader, a successful intuitive trader, is the easiest to risk manage. 
they are almost uniformly very grateful for someone who can um, put what they do in a rational context. You know, they don't know the math, they're not interested in looking at graphs, um, but you show them, look, uh, here is the one of the first things I do with virtually any trader, quantitative or qualitative, is I say, I, I just take a look at their trading history, and I say, did you know that you bet more when you're wrong than you're right? And is that, is that a the, common thing? Eighty <laughs> percent of, of, and I'm talking about successful traders and successful gamblers. You just say, look, look at your betting history, look at your big bets and your small bets, and you see you win more of your small than your big ones. Um, it's a behavioral thing. At least this is my explanation, which has a certain. I've actually discussed this with behavioral psychologists and, and gotten some positive feedback. I won't say they all agree with me, but it's when you make a decision, a good risk decision, there are dozens of voices in your head. And the way to make a good risk decision is to drown out everything else, just listen to those voices in your head and listen to all of them equally. Um, the quiet ones, and when you do that, you come up with a good risk decision, and um, but you're not entire, you're not overconfident about it. You know not just what the decision is, but how well you know it, which means how much you should bet on it. When the loudest voices, and those are usually fear and greed, when those are screaming, that's when you make a bad risk decision because you're ignoring all those other voices and you're very confident of it. Those voices make you overconfident. Those voices make you bet too much. And uh, we see it, there's a kind of analog with um, uh, group decisions, that if you have a bunch of people and 80% of them have a slight preference for A, A is a very, very good bet, a much better bet than any one of them individually thinks. If there's huge debate and you know a third of the people are passionately convinced of one thing and two thirds are passionately convinced of the other, you can ignore the whole group. You, you haven't learned anything. So uh, uh, that's what I show them. But anyway, that is a revelation to most people. Saying, look, just something as simple as making all your bets the same size, you would have 50% more money now. Um, once people see something like that, and there are a number of other biases of that kind, and if, if that one doesn't work, <laughs> if they happen to be good at knowing you know, what are their good bets and bad bets, then you find something else. That convinces somebody, whether they're a qualitative trader or a quantitative trader. And once you open that door, you're starting to think about things in the same way. You're not thinking about, is this a good trade? Or even, is this a good business? You're thinking about, is your risk-taking strategy good? Are you betting the right amount on things? We hope you enjoyed the video. At Real Vision, we help you understand the complex world of finance, business, and the global economy with in-depth analysis from real experts. Join the revolution at realvision.com.